Welcome back, graders. Thanks you, thank you for joining us for another virtual story time. We are reading stories about and coming out of China in honor of the Olympics this week. And today we have a special one, The Moose of Iwenki. This is written by Gero Shimeg, Black Crane, and illustrated by Zhu Er and translated by Helen Mixter. Let's get started. The reindeer Iwenki people live in the vast forests of the greater Hingong Mountains in northern China. They hunt and raise reindeer. On one of his hunting trips, the old hunter Gri Shek lay in ambush all night long. He saw, shot a moose. Gri Shek sat down to rest when he suddenly heard something rustling in the shrub behind him. <gasps> Do you see it? A baby animal looked out, trembling with fear. With its f fiery fur, the little thing looked like the rising sun over the mountains. Grishek realized it that it was a little moose. The hunting dog barked and growled, but Grishek told him to be quiet and held him back. Slowly, the little moose came over and licked Grishek's fingers. The old man felt terrible because reindeer Iwanki hunters would never hunt a female moose who was raising a baby. When he had shot her, he hadn't seen the baby moose lurking in the shrub, and it wasn't the normal season for babies. The motherless baby followed Grishek all the way back to the campsite. He was not afraid of people. He followed Grishek into his tent and fell asleep in no time beside the stove. Exhausted, Grishek also fell asleep, sound asleep and escaped into his dreams. He was awakened by a sudden bang. The little moose had knocked down the food shelf. The little moose was so hungry that he was searching for food all around the tent. Grishek found a bottle of reindeer milk. He rarely used it unless he wanted some milk for his tea, and it had almost for fermented into chunks by now. But he dipped a finger into the bottle and fed the little moose. Quickly, the baby licked it all up. But he was still hungry. He stumbled around the dark tent looking for something to eat. The rice and flour were soon gone. He even tried to eat the candle, and he kept Grishek awake the whole night. Zhao Han grew and grew, and before long, he was as big as an adult reindeer. That's better. 
The next day, the little moose began his new life at the campsite. He learned to drink reindeer meat, milk, and eat rice, and even grew fond of bread. He liked all kinds of human food in his belly, and he never seemed to be full. Grishak named him Zhao Han, which means little moose. This is better. Zhao Han grew and grew, and before long was as big as an adult reindeer. <laughs> but he didn't seem to know how big he was. He played outside all day long but still came into the tent to sleep. Zhao Han couldn't even turn around in there. So one day, he knocked the whole thing down. Grishak had no choice but to kick him out. <laughs> Zhao Han followed Grishak around everywhere all day long. He was curious about everything. At the campsite at night, he slept with the reindeer, all huddled together on the ground. Grishek lit a fire and burned incense to keep away the mosquitoes that tormented the animals. As he grew older, Zhao Han went into the forest with the uh, reindeer to search for something to eat. Living with the reindeer pack, he thought that he was a reindeer too. Do you see him? Can you find Zhao Han? When summer came, Zhao Han began to look for food in streams and ponds. He ate water lilies, cattails, and duckweed. Just like all animals. Grishek came on calling him Zhao, kept on calling him Zhao Han, Little Moose, even when he had grown into a giant. In the season when the reindeer were competing for females with whom to mate, the male reindeer began to challenge Zhao Han to fight. But he wasn't so strong that he won every, every struggle. When Zhao Han was growing into an adult, his friend Grishek was getting older and older. It was harder for him to bear the harsh life of the reindeer campsite. One autumn, he sprained his foot while he was out searching for the herd. Grishek's foot had to be treated in the Alugia village at the bottom of the mountain. Zhao Han, who had never left Grishek's side, followed him all the way down to the settlement. Grishek had to lock Zhao Han up in the courtyard, but there was nothing for him to do there. He was used to life in the wild. One day, he pushed through the fence. The 
The village dogs went crazy at the sight of him. For the dogs, moose were wild animals that had been hunted by the reindeer Awanki people for generations. But now, suddenly, here was a moose in their village, so they attacked him. Bu Zhao Han was a giant and very powerful, though he didn't seem to know how strong he really was. He tossed the dogs around like leaves blown by a crazy wind. The human world was full of temptations for Zhao Han. Mmm, grain, yum. He pushed into an unlocked warehouse and stole many, many bean cakes and drank a great deal of water. The bean cakes swelled in his belly until it looked like a drum. Shrishek led Zhao Han around all night long. At dawn, with a huge plop, Zhao Han finally rid himself of the bean cakes. Eek. The human world was also filled with danger for Zhao Han. Some in the Aluya village went to kidnap him and sell him to the zoo in the nearby city. They lured him into a noose using carrots. But Zhao Han was so strong that he knocked all the kidnappers down and almost tipped their truck over before coming home to Grishak. Grishek knew in his heart that Zhao Han would never get used to the human world in the village. So he brought him back to the mountain to the reindeer campsite. But Grishek was growing weaker and weaker. One morning, he took Zhao Han into the wildest part of the forest. He tried, tried to drive Zhao Han away by hitting and pushing him. He tried everything he could think of, but Zhao Han wouldn't budge. It had been six years since the morning when Grishek first brought Zhao Han to the campsite. The moose had never left his side since then. But now Grishek had no choice other than to give him back to the forest. Eventually, he shot at the ground beside Zhao Han. The stones bounced up and hit Zhao Han on the nose. In pain, Zhao Han finally ran off into the depths of the forest, leaving a shat sad Grishek behind. He returned alone to the reindeer camp that had emptied for the season. One, on one late autumn day, fierce winds rose up from all directions and blew the roofs off houses and tore up huge trees in the Alugia village. 
Some young hunters from the village rushed up to the reindeer campsite on the mountain to see how Grishek was faring, only to find that he had been dead for a long time. They buried Grishek on the high slope in the hopes that his soul would grow, go with the wind. His hunting dog insisted on staying behind to guard his master. The young hunters drove the pack of reindeer away from the campsite and never set foot in that part of the forest again. Years later, a poacher crept into the forest, hoping to hunt some wild reindeer. He saw the towering shadow of a giant moose far in the distance. He was so frightened that he shot all the bullets in his gun at the moose, but they missed. The moose rushed at him and, tossing his antlers, threw him far away into the bush. From then on, no one ever dared to enter that forest again. The reindeer Iwanki people still felt, tell each other that up on the mountain there lives a giant moose. He is guarding the vast forest and Grishek, his dead hunter. Thank you for joining me for Moose of Iwanki, a Chinese tale. We will hope to see you here at the library or virtually again very soon.